Hey everybody, welcome to my homestead and welcome to my channel. My name is Jared, and uh, here we go again with waiting for the pilot car to come. But as you can see, we're not in the same place as that last video. They've made some progress, and uh, we just drove on it, but they're not all the way done with the road yet. And um, here's Jenica. Hi. <laughs> Jenica was just uh, asking me about, I don't know, I don't know how many of you guys caught that live stream that we did before conference, and uh, there was a guy named Chris in there that claims to have spoken to a friend of President Nelson, and the friend said that before, uh, he said that President Nelson was going to give a final warning during this conference. And I've just been thinking about that, and I, I guess I'd like to do a poll. Maybe I should do like an actual poll on the, the community tab for the channel. But do you guys think that President Nelson's talk was a final warning? And um, I think it was. Say, I, just, say I think it was. It sounded like a final warning to those that aren't living a good life to say, like, okay, stop being contentious, stop doing this. This is this is it. Yeah. Well, the, so here's the interesting thing. Okay. The interesting thing about it is that for like the since I've started doing this channel, there's been a lot of talk about contention. There's been a lot of talk about um, being of one heart, one mind, you know, being Zion. And this conference, it was mentioned how the early saints weren't able to establish Zion because there was contention and they weren't one. So <clears throat> at least since I've been doing this channel, there's been a focus on that, but especially, especially this conference. So in other words, it's like it's kind of ramped up to this point in this conference was all about being a Zion. <laughs> it's just on me. I don't know what to do. <laughs> so, um, okay, I'll, I'll go over here. <laughs> so, and then if you caught my video I did at the gas station, I talked about how Elder Bednar seems to have been doing something over the last, his last three major messages. The first one was the July Liahona. I actually went back and verified it. So if you want to read his talk, it's the July 2022 Liahona, where he talked about being caught up and uh, raised up to meet Christ. And he leaves the specific scriptures that do refer to being caught up and quickened. And then, uh, in his October 2022, in the October 2022 General Conference in his talk, it was all about being prepared for the marriage feast. And then, in his latest talk in conference, <clears throat> April 2023, uh, a good portion of his talk <clears throat> was talking about uh, Enoch. You know? And uh, so... With that kind of progression, both with Elder Bednar and then also just in general with all the general authorities, it really, really, really seems to me like they're trying to get us to be the people that build new Jerusalem. And with President Nelson's talk, his talk was like a stern warning to those that... Um, entertain contention and cause contention because that's the number one thing that stopped the saints from building New Jerusalem at the time of Joseph Smith. So I think we're living in an exciting time. They're, they're like trying to get us ready for that time when we build New Jerusalem. Now, in one sense, New Jerusalem has been built because it refers to the entirety of the church. And um, all the stakes of Zion are Zion. North and South America is another definition of Zion in New Jerusalem. But I think we might actually be getting close 
to building the center place in Jackson County, Missouri, in Independence. And I don't mean to be your broken record, but there's always new people joining the channel. In uh, the 70s, they built the Independence Visitor Center because the church was facing imminent domain where <clears throat> they owned that land, but they weren't doing anything with it. And the city of Independence was like, hey, maybe we should uh, take it and turn it into like a school, like build a school there. So they built <clears throat> the, the Independence Visitor Center. And when it was dedicated, uh, there was a there was a storm. It was a stormy day, but at the time of the dedication, the storm let up as though it was a sign. And I think it was a sign. And we learn from the diary of Alvin R. Dyer, who was in the first presidency, and he had a special charge over the land of, of Missouri, uh, which is kind of weird. I'm, I'm not going to repeat his whole story, but he was a very interesting apostle. Um, very, very unique story. And one thing that happened during his time was the building of the visitor center. And in his diary, he talks about how him and the architect and David O. McKay, who was the president at the time, consulted together. And they determined which of the 24 temple buildings the Independence Visitor Center could be turned into in the future. And they built it to the specifications that was revealed to Joseph Smith. And uh, we actually looked that up in the Joseph Smith papers. I can't remember what it was. <clears throat> it was like something like, <clears throat> you know, like 61 feet by something feet. I don't know. I can't remember what it was. But that's how they built the center. So essentially, there's a temple already there. But right now it's being used as a visitor center. But it can be converted at any time into a temple. And what I wonder <clears throat> is if we're going to be seeing that pretty soon. Um, it's got to happen at some point, okay? They didn't just build it according to those specifications for it to not happen. At some point, it will be turned into a temple. So, and you also have to wonder too, if, if the church came together and we were, we became that Zion people that the Lord wants us to be, I wonder if at that point, you know, those other properties would be opened up to us. So, for example, what? I'm going to go. <clears throat> okay. Well, you hold the, yeah. you, you don't have to hold it on me. Like, maybe have okay, it on me I'll for a little it. bit. We can have it on the fields and stuff. Okay, just whatever you want. All right, here we go. Now it's our turn to go. But keep it plugged in, okay? Okay. Okay. So, anyway, um, Maybe if... Well, hopefully they can hear you. Do you think so? Yeah. Okay. But yeah, maybe keep it over here. Okay. <laughs> if that's okay. It doesn't yeah. have to be perfect. So maybe if the church attained that, that, that spiritual level of being Zion, um, avoiding contention, maybe these other church properties would become available. Like the Lord would make it so that we could get uh, the the uh, land that's currently owned that's for the first temple that would have been built as part of the 24 temple complex is currently owned by the Church of Christ temple lot. They're a very tiny church. They only have like 1,700 members. But they're the ones that own uh, the land for the first temple uh, where the cornerstones were laid. And then... We've been talking a lot about the community of Christ because I assume, well, yeah, no, yeah, definitely the 24 Temple Complex would extend into their property too. And um, we've talked quite a bit about the community of Christ and how uh, they're suffering. They're suffering in membership. Uh, they're suffering as far as the younger, their younger members um, not really paying tithing. <laughs> and so they've had to sell some of their historic assets and we've wondered oh is the time going to come when they sell the Kirtland Temple but I think you also have to wonder is the time going to come where they they dissolve and they're no longer a church you know their beliefs that they have now are nothing it doesn't seem like they're anything like they were before you know um, it's 
my understanding, after interviewing Linda Booth, who was the former president of the Council of the Twelve Apostles in the Community of Christ, that they used to believe in the three degrees of glory, and they used to believe that they were the true church, but not anymore. They're basically completely diluted. Can you get it so it's not showing the well, inside of the car? I have to go like this. Or, oh, okay, just whatever. Just I'm like, sorry, you guys. I'm not the best at video. Or just point it up a little bit more. And then it gets the mirror. Okay. Just like that or something. Okay. Okay. So, those are some things to think about. But it feels like, yes, it's a final warning. And, yes, they're, they're getting us... This is like maybe the final message before establishing Zion, whatever that looks like. Now, another possibility is maybe we'll have the translation happen and we'll meet with the city of Enoch. I don't know if that happens, you know, at the time of the sign of the Son of Man when Christ is coming coming in his glory and power. I'm not, I'm still trying to like, I, I'm not so sure that we have all the details about that. But... Maybe that's how it's going to happen. We're going to have the second coming and just kind of in, in very quick order. All these different events are going to take place within a few days or maybe a couple weeks or something like that. And, and then um, we'll truly have New Jerusalem prepared to be built. You know, maybe the maybe what will happen is the the world will be cleansed and then those properties will be freed up. And then immediate, immediately, uh, we will build the actual center place city of New Jerusalem. These are just some thoughts that I'm having. But all I can say is that it seems like this last conference was the most focused on becoming a Zion people. So focused that we're actually talking about uh, building New Jerusalem. Um, I still need to go through the talks, you know, th there's so much to dig into, but I know that, that New Jerusalem was brought up at least that one time. I don't know if they said New Jerusalem or Zion, but he, whoever was talking, they were referring to Jackson County. Um, I want to go through Elder Bednar's talk again and see what he said about, uh, Enoch I want to look at his footnotes, so you'll just have to give me some time to do that, and you, and you, of course, can do that in the meantime, you know, get ahead of me. But I think we're living in a very, 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 very exciting time. I'm of the opinion that the second coming is going to happen within President Nelson's lifetime. I, I tend to think, if I had to guess... I would guess that he is the prophet of the second coming based on everything that we've researched about him. And I also think there's a very good chance that, uh, like I said, he's going to be... Oh, look, there's mile marker 17. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he's the 17th prophet of the church. I also tend to think that there's a very, 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 very good chance that he will be among the first to go from a translated state to a resurrected state. And he'll only die in the sense that his mortality will be over, but it'll go from translated to resurrected. Um, so if that's the case, you know, he turns uh, 99 this year in 2023, and then he turns 100 in 2024. 2024 was the original date for uh, the completion of the Salt Lake Temple renovation. And since that time, it's been pushed back. Um, in fact, what wasn't isn't it now 2026? Yeah. Yeah. But here's the thing. And this has been said a couple times now. I think by both, by both Joseph Fielding Smith and Bruce R. McConkie, that when Christ comes, it's, it's an appointed time. It's all, it's already on the calendar on God's calendar. It's not going to be delayed because we're not righteous enough. It's not going to happen sooner because we are righteous or because whatever. There's an appointed time. And so something to think about is if that appointed time is in 2024, for example, 
<clears throat> well, the Salt Lake Temple not being ready. Turn sure, all the windows up. Okay. The Salt Lake Temple not being ready by that time, it may just be too bad. And again, I wouldn't be surprised if it's actually, in a way, being used as a tool to, um, for those that are just asleep in the church, to kind of give them a false sense of security. Like, oh, the temple's not even finished yet. We're still good. Right? So, and then, again, there's the stuff going on with 2024. Like, I, I think it's highly, highly significant that, that, that the eclipse happens the day after General Conference. So... I still think it could happen this year. I think it could happen next year. I think it could happen anytime. I think that things could happen very, very, very fast. Faster than what we realize. But uh, <clears throat> what seems clear is that right now they really want us to be Zion. And I think that's because we got to get uh, New Jerusalem constructed and become that people. So... Um, Anyway, I plan to do a video later today, like a regular video. I'm feeling a little bit better today. So, uh, you can you can look out for that. I would love to hear your thoughts and opinions, though. Um, yeah, just anything that you have to say. I know that we talk about these things over and over and over again, but this is just these are just my latest thoughts. You know, this last conference, it, just, it felt like the entire message was become a Zion people in order to build the new Jerusalem and uh, be prepared to receive Christ when he comes. But, uh, okay, uh, that's going to be it for this one. So, oh, you know what? One more thing. Um, Elder Bendar, he put out a video that was really interesting uh, yesterday. It's on the church YouTube channel. Uh, I'm probably going to bring that up in the next video. Yeah, in fact, that's what I was planning. I was going to make a video about that. So maybe go check that out. Because he says something really... He talks about Zion, actually. He talks about the gathering. And, uh... <laughs> it's, it's a really cool video. So, okay. That's going to be it for this one. So if you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe. Like this video if you liked it. Leave your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. Also make sure to share it. And I'll talk to you guys later.